హలో ఐఎమ్ డాక్టర్ లక్ష్మి కుమార్ ఐఎమ్ కన్సల్టెంట్ ఇంటర్వెన్షనల్ రేడియాలజిస్ట్ అట్ బేస్ హాస్పిటల్స్ హైదరాబాద్ టుడే విల్ డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ఎ కామన్ కండిషన్ కాల్ పల్మరీ థ్రామో ఎంబోలిజం సో దిస్ కండిషన్ హ్యాస్ త్రీ వర్డ్స్ పల్మరీ థ్రాంబస్ అండ్ ఎంబోలస్ పల్మరీ మీన్స్ లంగ్స్ థ్రాంబస్ మీన్స్ అ బ్లడ్ క్లాట్ ఎంబోలస్ మీన్స్ బ్లాకింగ్ ఎ బ్లడ్ వెజల్ దట్ ఈస్ ఆర్ట్రీ so if a blood clot blocks the lung arteries then that is called pulmonary thromboembolism so the primary cause is usually deep vein thrombosis in the legs so deep veins or the uh, veins which are situated uh, deeper to the skin in the lower limbs if there is a blood clot form there there is a chance that this blood clot may break from there and it travels through the lower limb veins and then through the uh, uh, heart right heart and then it reaches the lung arteries and in the lung arteries it blocks the lung arteries leading to pulmonary thromboembolism the usual cause is uh, deep vein thrombosis so all the risk factors for deep vein thrombosis are risk factors for pulmonary thromboembolism so the risk factors are uh, habits like smoking diseases like uh, cancer or uh, kidney diseases or if you have any major surgery like you had a surgery for uh, lower limbs like bone fractures in pelvis or your uh, femur tibia and uh, you undergone some surgery and you are taking bed rest for prolonged time then there is a chance for uh, blood to clot in the lower limb veins other risk factors like uh, if you are uh, traveling for a prolonged periods without uh, moving your legs like more than 6 hours you are traveling uh, either air travel or uh, uh, by road travel then uh, there is a chance that your uh, blood in your uh, lower limb veins can clot and it may migrate to your lung arteries so other risk factors are using uh, certain uh, medicines like uh, hormonal uh, replacement therapy oral contraceptive pills and uh, cancer medicines chemotherapy medicines so these are all risk factors and uh, some hereditary conditions also predispose to increased uh, cancer risk like uh, if you have a deficiency of uh, antithrombin or protein c or s deficiency or if you have factor 5 lead in mutation and other conditions like uh, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome so these are all the risk factors and recently we have the coronavirus uh, pandemic so coronavirus is also a risk factor for increase in the formation of clots in your uh, leg veins so that is also can predispose to pulmonary thromboembolism so if you develop pulmonary thromboembolism what happens uh, blood clot blocks the lung arteries so if you uh, if you know your uh, basic science from your school days so if we get we need oxygen for our survival so our oxygen whatever we inhale this goes into our circulation so uh, from where it goes is through the lung uh, uh, blood vessels so uh, normally arteries carry Uh, blood rich in oxygen and veins carry blood uh, which is less in oxygen so the blood which is rich in oxygen is called oxygenated blood and the blood which is uh, less in oxygen is called the deoxygenated blood uh-huh. so normally all the arteries in the body they carry oxygenated blood that is rich in the oxygen so they carry this oxygenated blood from the heart to the other organs like uh, kidney and liver and intestines all the limbs brain even the heart gets its uh, uh, blood supply oxygenated blood from the arteries the those arteries are called coronary arteries and what the veins does is after the organs utilize the oxygen in this blood they will uh, uh, return this uh, deoxygenated blood through the veins to the heart again so from the heart through the left heart you are, you get the oxygenated blood to the rest of the body and this deoxygenated blood goes through the veins into the right heart so right heart receives the deoxygenated blood and left heart pumps out the oxygenated blood
So after uh, the right heart receives this deoxygenated blood, this deoxygenated blood is uh, pumped into lungs through pulmonary arteries. So the pulmonary arteries are the only arteries in the body which carry the deoxygenated blood. All others carry oxygenated blood. So this pulmonary arteries which are carrying this deoxygenated blood, they uh, receive the oxygen from the airway, uh, from the uh, air that we have breathed in. So this mixes with the blood and it becomes again oxygenated blood. This oxygenated blood goes into the pulmonary veins and these veins will drain into the left heart. So the pulmonary veins are the only veins in our body which carry the oxygenated blood. All others carry the deoxygenated blood. So this oxygenated blood which is received by the left heart from the pulmonary veins, this goes into the rest of our body. So that is the importance of our lung circulation. So what is the lung circulation? It uh, receives oxygen from the air and it gives the oxygen to the blood and this blood goes into the rest of our body. So if there is a block in the lung circulation, the lung arteries if they are getting blocked, so you uh, the oxygen supply to the body decreases. So all the organs can get affected due to decrease in the oxygen levels in your blood. Even the heart can get affected due to low oxygen, so its function will decrease and the kidneys can get affected. So, the related symptoms will develop, like uh, you will develop chest pain, breathlessness means uh, you will be uh, longing for air, you are not able to get adequate oxygen inside, so you will be uh, breathing rapidly and uh, your saturations will be less, chest pain will develop and you will feel a lightheadedness syncope because your brain is not getting the enough oxygen supply and commonly this is due to a deep vein thrombosis so your leg may have a swelling pain redness increase in local rise of temperature and also your heart rate can increase so if you have any of these symptoms uh, you must uh, urgently consult one uh, nearby doctor so, what does the doctor do is, he will first take your uh, history and uh, history means uh, uh, what are your symptoms, uh, is, are you feeling any breathlessness, any chest pain uh, and any lightheadedness and he will do physical exam to see what is your saturation level in your blood and what is the heart rate, what is the blood pressure and uh, he will examine your lower limbs, is there any swelling, tenderness. So, if there, if there are all the features present, then you have a high likelihood that you have pulmonary thromboembolism. So, now to confirm whether you have pulmonary thromboembolism or not, you will order some tests. So, to look at the pulmonary arteries, we have uh, one uh, beautiful study called CT pulmonary angiography. So, in that study, uh, we will inject uh, one contrast or dye into your uh, uh, peripheral veins, means uh, the veins located in your uh, hands or legs. From there, this contrast will go into your heart and it will go into your uh, lung arteries. So, uh, after injecting this dye, we will do the CT. So, this dye uh, increases the uh, contrast of your uh, pulmonary arteries. So, if there is any block within this uh, pulmonary arteries, we can clearly see uh, whether there is any block or not. So, this is uh, nowadays the standard of uh, uh, diagnosing the pulmonary thromboembolism. If you have any contraindication for this study, like you have allergy to the contrast, then uh, we may give for other nuclear medicine based study called ventilation perfusion scan in which a radioactive dye is uh, inhaled and also a radioactive dye is injected into your peripheral veins. So, that dye can be uh, uh, examined in a special scanner. So, that will uh, tell us uh, what is the level of circulation in your lungs. Is there any defect in some part of circulation and is there any defect in the ventilation of some part of lung. So, that is also one more uh, examination to diagnose the pulmonary thromboembolism. So, next thing is uh, uh, to know the cause where it is coming from, the clot where it is coming from, we may order uh, the color Doppler study of lower limb veins. So, by this study, we can see uh, is there any clot in your lower leg veins, 
uh, or sometimes you can develop clot in your upper limb veins also like in uh, uh, chronic uh, intravenous drug abusers they will uh, inject drugs uh, repeatedly into their uh, upper limb veins those can get blocked and that clot can migrate to the lungs so that also we can diagnose and uh, moreover in these iv drug abusers these clots are most of the times infected clots so so that uh, infected clot will go to lung and it will cause infection in the lung also that that condition is called septic pulmonary embolism so all these uh, clots in your limbs can be diagnosed with your ultrasound color doppler other test a uh, blood test is a d dimer test it can recognize uh, if there is any clot anywhere in your body venous system so that is knowing the cause and to know the risk factor uh, we may do certain tests if you have an obvious risk factor like a prolonged immobilization or a long distance travel then there is no need to test for the cause if you don't have a, a specific uh, a reason obvious reason then we may need to do additional tests to diagnose uh, the cause of this uh, blood clotting in your veins so this may include a uh, genetic test so to detect any genetic abnormality that predisposes to blood clot formation in your veins or uh, certain scans or uh, tumor marker tests to detect any cancer any dormant cancer underlying cancer in your body so and any kidney disease which can predispose to this clots so so these are all the tests we you may undergo f- uh, while you are evaluating f- uh, evaluated for the pulmonary thrombus embolism so the main goal of uh, pulmonary thrombus embolism treatment is to decrease your symptoms to uh, open those clots and so the main goal of the treatment is not to make the clots a uh, bigger than those are at present so this can be achieved most of the times with medicines so mostly the medicines which we use are the anticoagulants that means uh, they prevent the blood from clotting again so those are the primary medicines that we use if you have more symptoms that means uh, submassive or massive embolism which means your bp is very low less than 90 or it is less than 40 mmhg from the previous normal bp range or if your heart rate is very high and you are old age and uh, chronic lung disease or chronic heart disease in those cases uh, we may require to give you thrombolytics in addition to the anticoagulants so what does it thrombolytic does is so it breaks the clot that is formed so the anticoagulant it prevents a formation of a new clot but the thrombolytic breaks the clot that is already formed so but it has some inherent risk this thrombolytics like uh, increased predisposition to bleeding from other organs like brain or uh, abdomen or anywhere in the body so that's why we uh, uh, assess the risk benefit ratio if there is a more benefit for the thrombolytics compared to the risk then only we will advise this thrombolytic so in patients with more severe condition more severe pulmonary embolism who have more uh, bleeding risk uh, with uh, thrombolysis from peripheral veins that is veins in the uh, le- uh, lower legs or uh, upper forearms then we may give this uh, thrombolytic directly at the level of pulmonary arteries this can be done by an interventional radiologist so the interventional radiologist role is to break a clot if it is a severe pulmonary embolism and uh, the patient is uh, not a candidate for uh, systemic that is iv thrombolysis from a peripheral vein then we go up to the pulmonary arteries then we inject the thrombolytic there or without using thrombolytic we may suction the clot or we may break with the clot with our uh, spe- special devices so that your block in the pulmonary arteries will decrease and the uh, circulation to the lungs will uh, will be restored again so 
we do this uh, with the help of uh, local anesthesia there is no need of uh, general anesthesia so with local anesthesia under ultrasound and uh, our x-ray guidance we put a small needle in your uh, lower limb vein and through that needle we put a small catheter that's a long uh, narrow pipe and this uh, pipe uh, we will take it through to your uh, lung arteries under x-ray guidance and uh, there uh, once we reach the level of block we may inject the thrombolytic or uh, with the help of catheter we will suck out the thrombus or with our special catheters we can break the catheter break the clot and thereby we can restore the uh, circulation back to normal in the lungs so this is the role of uh, interventional radiologist in the treatment of pulmonary thromboembolism so other treatment uh, which is offered is surgical embolectomy means uh, if the uh, patient symptoms are severe and there is no uh, available uh, treatment from interventional radiologist means the interventional radiologist is not available and a good surgical team is available then you may go for a open surgery and they can cut open your uh, chest and uh, open your uh, pulmonary artery and then they can uh, remove the clot and then suture the artery and the chest wall again so this is uh, the other uh, treatment that is available the pulmonary thromboembolism can be prevented by preventing uh, deep vein thrombosis in your legs so whenever you go for a long journey like uh, car travel or a uh, flight travel or a bus uh, by road travel uh, it is advisable to uh, take a walk every 30 minutes or so or if you are not able to take a walk you can at least uh, uh, flex and extend your uh, feet like this uh, flex and extend your feet and uh, flex and extend your knees so this is also a, a very good uh, option to prevent formation of clots in your body so next is uh, if you are uh, a patient uh, who underwent surgery for your uh, fractures so in those cases we give uh, some low dose anticoagulant to prevent uh, a formation of blood clot in your veins also in this cancer patients and other high risk patients we give this uh, low dose uh, anticoagulants to prevent formation of anti uh, clots in your legs so what are the special precautions that a, a patient on anticoagulants need to take so a patient on anticoagulants is more prone for bleeding even with a minor injury so because this anticoagulants they will prevent formation of a blood clot in your blood uh, circulation so even with a minor injury the bleeding may not stop so that's why you need to be careful uh, with your day to day activities better uh, wear as much as protective gear as possible like wearing helmets and wearing arm pads and uh, leg pads uh, while you are riding or uh, if you do uh, if you play any sports and uh, uh using soft bristled uh, toothbrush and uh, avoiding uh, foot injuries by wearing shoes all the time so these are all the special precautions that you need to take if you are on anticoagulants and uh, if you uh, by chance develop any injury and uh, bleeding and it is better to stop the anticoagulation dose uh, after consulting with your uh, physician and uh, immediately you need to consult the nearby doctor and take the necessary advice yes it can lead to sudden death if there is a massive uh, clot in your lung arteries it may block multiple lung arteries this can lead to a sudden decrease in oxygen supply to the rest of your body and increase in uh, workload for your right heart so uh, if the right heart workload is more it will get dilated this may compress the left heart also so this can lead to decrease in uh, outflow from the left heart also this will lead to decrease in blood pressure and decrease in oxygen supply and decrease in blood pressure can lead to sudden death if the uh, thromboembolism and the clot burden is very massive or severe if the clot burden is very less uh, 
then you may not develop any symptoms then it will be uh, treated on its own uh, the body has inherent uh, mechanism to lyse the clots to break the clots so it can decrease and if you have a significant clot burden and you are developing symptoms you may require at least anticoagulants uh, medicines to, uh, for the treatment we have uh, two types of cholesterol ldl and hdl cholesterol if the ldl uh, cholesterol levels are more it predisposes to increased clot formation in your arteries it, uh, it uh, has no or less relation with the veins whereas if the hdl or the good cholesterol levels are low it may predispose to increased clot formation in your veins so low hdl cholesterol can lead to uh, venous clots formation and thromboembolism yes large uterine fibroids uh, can compress the veins which are present in your pelvis so if these veins are compressed the blood flow in these veins will be decreased and clots can form there and that clots those clots can go up to your lung arteries and can cause pulmonary thromboembolism although pulmonary thromboembolism cannot directly lead to brain stroke in most of the cases a patient with pulmonary thromboembolism that means a venous clot it has also risk factor to develop an arterial clots for example if a cancer patient uh, has a venous clot he also has a tendency to develop arterial clot so if there is an arterial clot in the brain arteries that can lead to brain stroke so both conditions can coexist a brain stroke and pulmonary thromboembolism can coexist in a patient although you are taking blood thinner you can get uh, uh, venous clot in your legs and it can lead to pulmonary thromboembolism uh, how means uh, uh, if you are taking the dose of uh, blood thinner less than that is prescribed that is number one risk factor that you can get clot in your veins so second risk factor is if you have a uh, underlying uh, disease very severe disease like cancer although you are on blood thinner you may get uh, clots although you are on blood thinner you may get clots and that can lead to pulmonary thromboembolism so as we discussed uh, interventional radiologist uh, can treat the clot if the symptoms are very severe apart from interventional radiologist uh, the lung symptoms are managed by the pulmonologist and the heart symptoms means uh, if there is a block in your lung arteries so the pressure to pump the blood from the right heart will increase so the right heart will uh, be dilated and it may get weaken over time so these symptoms will be managed by cardiologist so apart from this uh, hematologist can uh, can be consulted uh, for advice on uh, what is the cause of the blood clot formation in your uh, legs so uh, he may uh, work uh, work you up for uh, any hereditary blood disorders which can predispose to increased clot formation in your legs so the hematologist can um, uh, help you with that some autoimmune conditions also can predispose to this uh, a blood clot formation those will be managed by a rheumatologist so so this uh, pulmonary thromboembolism patient needs to be taken care by multiple specialty doctors so it's a team work